Okay, Model A fans, welcome to my little amusement park I call Disaster Land, where the coffee's cold, the beer is warm, the whiskey is exceptionally cheap or of low quality, and the headaches are in abundance. Uh, today's little carnival ride we'll call the uh, Rods of Frustration. Um, this car has been suffering. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm new to Model A's, so pardon my nomenclature on these pieces and parts and what they are, but uh, I've gotten a lot of help from people on the internet, and this is kind of my way of paying them back, and I hope I don't insult anybody with <laughs> those accolades. So anyhow, uh, the car has been slapped around for 93 years, had some real hacks working on it, obviously, and uh, so I'm the newest one to add to the long, long laundry list of uh, poor repairs. Hope to do a better job. Um, as many of you probably have experienced, um, I don't know what you call this, but I call it a pie crust. My pie crust was all licked clean or licked away by these silver tongues here. This one controlling the spark and this one the throttle. Um, and also the underside I found out was worn flat too. So I wanted to get in there and uh, get the pie crust all flaky and buttery again. And also this bushing here was bad. Uh, the, the, the holio right here um, was all wallered out from the shaft slopping around, so I had to get a new one of these. And I thought just because you know, there's these screws here, right? Yeah, you just unscrew those, and this just magically pops out, right? Wrong again, honey. Um, that thing was in there tighter than Dick's hat band, and I had to figure out a way to get it out. And you know, you go to the, the red book that uh, is a great piece of material but leaves out a lot of details you know so it says you know take the whole steering assembly out of the car and you got to take the whole gearbox apart and then well if you got the one with the clamp on it you can take this apart and drive a rod up through there and hammer it out like the book says well i think this is a seven tooth guys correct me if i'm wrong i'll be sure there's plenty of insults in the comment section afterwards uh, but no I can't take this apart and I'm too lazy to take this whole thing apart so um, I had to come up with a smart way to get this out uh, to get the horn uh, button out I just slackened up the bolts popped them out dropped the steering column and all that stuff came out so I did this all while in the car we'll get to these antennas later uh, so getting the bushing out was an experience. I really had to think this through because, like I say, she was in there good and snug. So, what we did, here's the old one, and you can see it had this bronze bushing in there, and you can see that uh, she's pretty sloppy, <laughs> and then some brainiac, <laughs> lazier than myself, Thought they could fix it by putting this in here like this. Voila! Oh yeah, she's snug now, yeah? No. So, um, I had to get this out, and it wasn't easy because it wasn't tight. So, I'm thinking, 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 and I'm looking around this pile of mess I've got in here, and I got smart. These holes here for the rods are 5 sixteenths perfect because that's the drill you need to put in a 3 8 16 thread. So, now you go to the charts and you think, okay, there it is. And you drill the hole that's already there, run the tap through it, and then, you see, you put the bolt in like this. It's brains. Brains. And then, once you get it to the right height in there, uh, the shaft is still in place. And you put the nut back on top of the shaft, and then it's like pulling a nail. You get the claw hammer in there, and you leverage it against the top of the uh, shaft threads with the nut on it. And because this isn't centered, it's going to want to come out a little crooked. So you pull on it, it comes up, and then you tap it flat again, square. You pull it up, and you, it comes crooked, and you tap it flat. And, and you do this a couple times, and it pops right out. And... If you want to reuse, if there's nothing wrong with your bushing, I mean, well, it's out, you might as well put a new one in, they're not that expensive. But this hole's still the same size. The tap did not enlarge it, it just threaded it. So the rod still fits in the hole the same way. 
And the other problem I had, you know, watch how loose this is. It's like muffins, huh? And um, so I wanted to see why this was so tight. So I put the calipers on it, and I realized that it's a bit oversized for the uh, inside diameter of that tube. And I don't have a lathe, but I have my methods, my ways. So what I did, I needed to hold this thing still, the new one, and take some outside diameter off of this thing. So to hold it steady, 5 sixteenths, remember, two drill bits chucked up in the vise. Now anchored nice and firm. And with a series of files, I cut around and, you know, finer file and kept doing this and then hitting it with the uh, two-handed sandpaper technique. You can saw it back and forth. And I eventually got it down to the diameter that was uh, more accommodating, which was about one inch and six tenths of an inch. A uh, little bit more than that was okay, but now it, it, it drops in there nicely and snugly. And I, I had to drill new holes, which I did with a located assembly technique. Once I got the bushing in there, drop it in, then I just found the holes located off of these. And uh, it's a 1032 screw. And I needed a, I got to make a bottoming tap still for that. I got the tap started, the thread started. So I just bought an extra tap and I'll cut the end of it off with the Dremel little cutoff wheel. And I will square off the end of the, another 1032 tap and I'll be able to get the threads right down to the bottom on this. So once I started getting that together, again, the, uh, the red book says just line the holes up and push the rods on through. Yeah. Again, uh, details are left out there. So there's nothing connecting A to B down here. There's the little holes that it comes out down at the far end and the little holes up here at the top end. But nothing connects them. So when you try to fish the rods through and you don't have nothing to guide them down there, <laughs> they're not cone shaped or anything like a funnel. I drove myself nuts trying to figure this out. So again, I had to get smart. So I'm looking at this thing, right? And I'm thinking, how do I get this in? Because the tolerance around these rods for this hole is five, it's, it's tight. It's same thing down there. So I, I gotta find out a way to thread this through. Got new rattlers on there too, anti-rattlers. So look what I did here. I drilled a uh, 1 16th inch hole down about a half inch maybe into that deep there. You don't want to go into the hole because you could risk getting solder in those holes and this means you got to clean them out and all that stuff. So try not to go that deep. But I took some of the welding rod out of my um, MIG welder. This is uh, 30 thou. Nice stout stuff. I thought if I had to pull it I wanted something with, uh, that could take it. And so uh, I uh, soldered that in with just regular pipe solder you'd use for your bathroom fixtures. You know, just, just uh, Regular old solder and a little one of those little burns o matic torches. Those little uh, I got one right here. This guy right here. The temperature was nice and it came up really compact and nice and easy. And the solder easily sweated into there. And now, uh, with I'm going to show you with, with what ease. Oh, first of all, let me go back a little bit. I took the wire and threaded it up from the bottom first. So it came up through the holes and I identified each wire there was a piece of blue tape on this one I got a piece of blue tape on the rod for the uh, distributor and I also have one down here with the blue tape on it right here so it's very important to keep these separate because wherever these wires go the rods are gonna go so when you get these wires sorted up to the top make sure they're not twisted they're not wrapped around the shaft and I did that just by some magnets. I put a magnet here on each, and you can see the little bend I put in there, right here. Um, that was up against here, and I had a magnet holding it in place on both of them. And once I got the wires up here, I just nailed them down to the pie crust with a magnet too to keep them separate. Look down with the flashlight down here and make sure that they are separated. And once this whole thing, then you got to make sure you got the whole rig together with the anti-rattlers and all that stuff. I should get this one up a, 
a little bit higher up, but they'll still go there completely later. But you're going to see how this goes together so easy with this technique. And I did this one-handed, guys. Look. Both of those rods are through. Really, really easy. It's worth a couple bits of minutes it's going to take to do this. Because then you can just snip these off with the dikes, get them flat, and there's no structural integrity has been compromised by this because it's it just rotates. There's no load on these at all, except for whatever comes off of that right there. And um, But yeah, you can snip this off and nobody knows you've been up in there horsing around. And um, I think this is going to really work out well. I thought I'd video this before I put it all back together. Um, I'm really looking forward to operating the steering wheel with this all new and tightened up. I've redone the whole front end on this car. So I got all new goods from front, from wheel to wheels down there. So this thing's going to handle really, really nice. I'm going to be able to use the cruise control on it. I'm going to be able to set my advance um, accurately now that I've got these fresh flaky buttery pie crust on here and um, I hope this helps out um, like I said I was able to do this with the, sh the whole steering column in the car by just lowering the thing taking the seats out uh, it's very easy to do but um, I hope my frustration makes uh, your experience a lot easier um, like I said this bushing slides in here really nice and easy now if I got to take it out. I do have this one threaded, so if I need any assistance uh, taking this out in the future, I will put the bolt in here and easily pop it out. So it's serviceable now. And I'm not concerned. You can see how this is still very, very tight, even with those threads in there. I'm going to make sure I put some grease in there on those threads to uh, keep everything lubricated. And uh, this should serve me well for a long time. Um, hope it helps you guys. Cheers. And there's one thing I forgot to mention. I remember I had some flats on the back side of these rods too. Um, this was easy to fix too. I just got in there with the MIG welder, gave her a couple squirts, and built up a little material there, and knocked it down with the Dremel, and then cleaned it up with the file, and it's nice and round again to catch the edges of the crust here. So that's how I repaired that.